I'm Beth Guckenberger, and this is the Reckless Faith Podcast. Welcome back. I'm here today with Rob Hall, my good friend and colleague at Back to Back Ministries. I'm so enjoying this stuff. We're on day 16, a reckless faith, uh, 40-day journey to saying yes, kind of the special series of the Reckless Faith podcast. It's just really good stuff. And I keep, I keep maybe my in my own whatever, I keep waiting for the next day to be like, <laughs> but the, it's just, we're in the deep water again today. But that's such a good thing. I hope so. It, it is such a good thing. And and uh, today is another one of those examples. Uh, day 16 is green pastures, yes to trusting. I hope, I, I really do trust the people. If, they, if they're into day 16 and they keep listening to this bonus material, it's feeding them. This depth is feeding them. Um, you tell a really great story um, about... Uh, about you know, kind of pushing fences <laughs> on day sixteen. Yeah, this was another uh, one of those moments with my dad. We were driving in his convertible. I love, I loved his car, and the only way that I got to drive it in the beginning was if he was sitting in the passenger seat. So we were on this trip and driving out in the country, and and as you read in the day, you know, the cows are pushing on the fences, and and he related that metaphor to me, and. I, I think he probably had seen that quality in me as a four-year-old who didn't want to go to bed on time and as a 10-year-old who wanted to participate in more activities than was made sense for a fourth grader and as a 15-year-old who wanted to go on a date when she probably was too young. And like he already saw that that sense inside of me of wanting more than probably was even good for me. And the world was sending me all these messages that what was available to me, what was out there in the more um, – would satisfy. And there were things that were, um, would have led to my own destruction. And I, and I, I think he watched not only the cultural war around me, but even just my own sin nature wrestling with wondering, um, in my, like, if you go to a restaurant with me, if I like to order something new every time I'm there, <laughs> yeah. if every time I've gone to the grocery store, like literally since I was married, I've bought one thing I've never bought before because I'm just curious is this the cracker I've been waiting my whole life for? Is this <laughs> is this fruit that I've never even seen before? Like, will I've this, been missing out. This will is this it. complete my culinary experience. Like, <laughs> I, I have always, I've liked to read things I've never read before. Like, I've always had a, a thirst for for that which I didn't know. And I think he wanted me to understand how important it was to put boundaries on that. That that's okay. That God gave that to me. That's okay. That that's how it's been made. But you need to you need to understand how to put that under the Spirit's control. I love getting to sit in this seat, um, and I because I I want to imagine what it's like for people out there who are doing this. Um, what struck me as as you were talking was now you're doing a different kind of fence pushing, but it's not to get outside of the kingdom. In many ways, what you do now is to knock down fences that are inside that kind of mm-hmm. structure that's preventing people to get from some of the purest water, some of the greenest grass. Um, you're still pushing fences this many years later. Yeah, I think that th- that is how God made me. And to try to pretend like I'm something that I'm not or someone that I'm not doesn't even make any sense. But to put that quality underneath the Spirit's control is going to unleash good- goodness in me. And then I just am, uh, I-, I mean, called is probably the right word, but I would say hungry for or passionate about helping people realize that there's more to the faith life that we are all experiencing than we currently know today. And there's no end to that ocean bottom. Like we, we, we can, just like in any human relationship, it literally can get better one day after the next. So is the same in our relationship with the Lord. Like every day there could be something more for us that, that piece of fruit we've never tried before. And, and just how to understand the difference between green pastures that God provides and the road where pain is awaiting us. Yeah, it's just I think it's a great picture. So often we're like, what's what is what is this boundary keeping me from? And realizing that if I just kind of turn around and look the other direction, there are pastures and places that I've never even been mm-hmm. that the Lord has prepared for me, um, and that that's going to be sweeter than anything that the Lord is protecting me from. Yeah, yes is like a to say yes to something. It's a trajectory changer, and it. I always think of yeses as like doorknobs. And when you say yes and you open that door, only Jesus knows what's on the inside that room. 
But if you say yes, you get to then experience it and learn and grow and, and expand it. Yeah, and the subtitle, Yes to Trusting, that really is at the heart. Like, mm-hmm. I'm trusting that if I get outside this boundary, like your dad was teaching you, that that's not good for me. I trust you. And if I turn around and I look inside of that boundary, I trust you that you're going to provide me all kinds of adventures and great things that I never could have imagined. I trust you to go push down some of those walls and look for what it is that you have for me. That's how I can be reckless. And I think a trusted voice is important in that trusting process. Like I remember saying to him, okay, if you're telling me that adventure, satisfaction, peace, joy, love, if those things you found in the past year, I trust you, I'll go there and look for it. And so just encouraging uh, our listeners today to be as bold as possible to share with the people that are important to them about what has happened to them when they said yes to Jesus. Yeah, today's action. Thank God for the green pastures in your life. Take a drink of really cold water and feel how refreshing it feels. Tell the Lord you want only his living water to refill you when you're depleted and to spill out of you onto others. Yeah, Jeremiah 2 um, talks a little bit about how we can have living water and that when when we forsake his living water instead drink dirty cistern water that we think we're being satisfied but instead we're actually being poisoned and so i wanted just that mental physical feeling Mm -hmm. of that cold fresh water and and just the hunger for more great great stuff hey if you have reckless faith a 40-day journey to saying yes we hope the podcast keeps you focused on having meaningful conversations today with God through the devotional and with others and sharing those experiences. If you're here and haven't yet gotten a copy, you can find it on Amazon or for the book and other resources, visit backtoback.org slash 40 days. That's B-A-C-K, the number two, B-A-C-K dot org slash 40 days. Yeah, thank you for being on this journey towards a more reckless faith. And until next time. 